See, bro, people are getting emotional for no reason. But you know what? It, it, it takes a real man and it takes a real Muslim to be able to do what he just did, you know, like apologize and ask for that forgiveness from all these people. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Without further ado, let's go right in. На последней пресс-конференции был вопрос про Афганистан. Ты очень резко отреагировал на него. Объясни, почему у тебя была такая реакция и как-то ты пересмотрел, может быть, с тех пор свой взгляд на эту тему. Ну, смотрите, реакция была на то, что я просто не хотел политические моменты комментировать. Да, конечно, реакцию я получил бурную от моих болельщиков, так скажем, от афганцев. Я думаю, что единственное, я вот там пересмотрел свой ответ. А я думаю, что там было неправильно то, что я сказал, э, то, что за тысячу километров творится, это меня не касается, и тебя не касается того, кто меня спрашивал. Э, вообще с самим афганским народом у меня очень тесные отношения. С 2012 -го года я нахожусь в Сан-Хосе, вы сами знаете, это в Калифорнии, а там есть город э, Фримант. Э, там находится 150 тысяч семей афганских живут, это самое большое комьюнити за пределами Афганистана. У меня очень близкие отношения, там есть разные люди, есть люди, которые работают на Google, Apple, есть спортсмены, есть бойцы UFC, есть там, я не знаю, там владельцы там ресторанов, там, имамы мечетей, ну разные люди, с кем мне приходится контактировать, общаться, и у меня очень много, очень много друзей, близких людей с Афганистана. Я думаю, что они неправильно меня поняли, что я сказал, что меня как-то не касается, я имел в виду политическую обстановку, не хочу комментировать. И надеюсь, что они меня просят, если на самом деле я их чем-то обидел, хотел бы принести извинения тоже. Я считаю, что ну, мне не стыдно перед ними извиняться. Любой человек может э, сделать ошибку, но э, когда я это говорю, у меня вообще все по-другому было в голове. У меня не было, что меня не касается то, что их постигает там, и так далее. Я просто не хотел комментировать политическую обстановку. А, да, это Нарнорд -Нар очень многострадальный. Многое видели на своем веку, так скажем. Если даже просто обернуться, прочитать историю, посмотреть последние там, 120 лет, что творилось там. И продолжает твориться до сих пор. Ну, конечно, за этот народ больно, переживаешь, и просто хочу пожелать им всего самого наилучшего. See, bro, people are getting emotional for no reason. But you know what, it, it, it takes a real man, and it takes a real Muslim to be able to do what he just did, you know, like apologize and ask for that forgiveness from all these people when he he clearly wasn't wrong, but he looked at his, his response and he saw like, you know what? I could see where the, uh, the downfall was and what I said, how I said it. I could see how it impacted these people. Let me take ownership for that action. Let me take ownership for what I did. And bro, at the end of the day, we're all, we're all human. We ain't perfect. We ain't perfect, bro. Not just that, bro. We're all, we're all accountable for what we do and what we say. So the fact that he humbled himself in front of Allah, I like that. And that he humbled himself for his fellow brothers and sisters in humanity and in faith. Mm -hmm. It goes to show Allah that he didn't even, and, and it's what he said too. He he specifically said, I'm not ashamed to apologize. And I feel like a lot of people today, they're too egotistic. Mm -hmm. When they, when they, it's one thing to like mess up and then apologize. Do you know what I mean? Or it's one thing to not mess up and not want to apologize or address it, right? Because they're going to be like, oh, I didn't say anything. I didn't really do anything. I didn't mean it. But then there's people that have said something or done something knowingly, and they still don't want to apologize or at least acknowledge that they're responsible and take mm -hmm. accountability. Mm -hmm. Bro, and he probably understands the, uh, the whole political side of it too, which I'm not going to get into detail about that. And I'm not going to say much on like what we know. But it's like, dude, if, if people were to actually research or, or actually kind of like look into this stuff and figure out what's going on behind the scenes yeah they probably wouldn't want to talk about it either because it's it's all twisted bro it's all twisted and 
I don't know, man, you talk about it. Like, and this is me, not even, this is me trying not to talk about it. Like just kind of like beating around the bush here, not trying to go in. Cause like, I know what's, what's going to happen if, if you actually talk about it, but it's like, mm. dude, to know that if you actually talk about it, you get pretty much singled out. And then like, yeah, not, not just backlash, but basically you, you disappear. And that's putting it in in very light terms. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So the world we live in, man. The more, bro, the older I get, the more I realize that the end is, it's near. We already know the end is near, you know. But yeah, it's it's crazy to think that it might be in our lifetime. Who knows? Allah who Yeah. Let's let's make dua that inshallah it won't. No, no, I mean, but you know what, man? Like, if it happens, it happens, and people need to be well aware of that fact and just be ready if it does happen. Mm-hmm. You know. With that being said, if y'all made it this far, comment down below hashtag accountability, and look forward to seeing y'all next time. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Got to do the thing, bro. her daughters and how like when they moved and everything they were just kind of like their behavior was different um and just their whole outlook and everything was different and you would think well it's not that big of a deal really like we just moved from like this house to this house this neighborhood to this neighborhood but then it's like you got to factor in all the uh social changes and any other constructs that can come with that and it's like for a kid to them it, it's it's a bigger it's more overwhelming right because they they have like no say and it's like they're just kind of like under the whim of like what the parents are saying or under the order of what the parents are saying was this why who are you to tell me that i cannot be this and that and the easiest refutation is that she hired the prophet Salaam and other men to go do the work and that's the whole story these sisters they need to wake up khadija was not the type of woman to go and mix with men go outside mm. blah 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 you know business this and that see or no did she have ideas for business was she running it yes did she do the muscle work no Study the Sira, study the Hadith before you talk, okay? Because it gets you in trouble. Mm-hmm.